Hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. Well today is another installment in the series Owning a Family Milk Cow and we're going to talk about behavior traits to look for and feeding your dairy cow. But first, we've got to make a run to the feed store. <laughs> It's time to buy feed. One of my favorite things to do. Okay, I got a list. I need two alfalfa cubes. Yes, ma'am. I need uh, one non-GMO chicken feed. The lamb pellet or the starter grower? I need the lamb pellets, okay. but I need two starters. Okay. Okay, so that's one lamb pellet and two of the non-GMO starters. Yeah, and then and all the all of this is non-GMO if you got it. Yes, everything. Everything the alfalfa cube will just be cubed alfalfa. Right, and do you know that's non-GMO? Is it? Yep, I, I didn't know it, but on the back of the bag okay. it says it. So, all right. and uh, four non-GMO all stock. Okay, and four non-GMO multiple mm -hmm. species. All right, let's see. Uh, let me make sure I got the chicken feed right. I need mm -hmm. one. What is the chick starter? Is that 18% yes, protein? We got okay. you one 16% non-GMO lamb pellet, two 18% non-GMO starter grower, four of the 14% multi-species non-GMO, and two of the alfalfa. That's cubes. it. All That's right. what I need. All right, and uh, local honey. All right, this would come from Petal. This is Wayne County, and this is the Alabama Mississippi State. I love that one, but I'm 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 not gonna get that one this yes, time. So <laughs> I'm gonna get that. <laughs> One of the most fun things for me to do is to make a trip to the feed store and it is a trip we have to drive a little ways to source my non-gmo feed but it is well worth it and we stock up while we're there and but ben's we're talking about feed let's talk about feeding your dairy cow the most important thing that you are going to feed your cow is either good quality pasture or the very best quality of hay that you can find. You want uh, to try to source hay that is not sprayed for weeds 
but that is hard to do. The reason that I try to source hay that is not sprayed is because I'm trying to eliminate any residue of pesticides and herbicides out of our diet. And if my cow eats it, it possibly can, uh, the residue can possibly pass over into her milk. But before I let her go hungry, I will feed her the best that I can find sprayed or not. And we're pretty lucky sourcing it not sprayed around here. So uh, fertilized is good because it does up the nutrition and also if it's fertilized it's less likely to be sprayed for weeds. So that's the number one highest percentage feed that you're going to feed is going to be hay or pasture. You don't want your grain to be more than your than your roughage. So let's talk about the grain. I feed a non-GMO all stock and it's 14 percent and it's uh, it maintains lily very very well but when you get your your future cow you want to be sure to get um, a little bit of her feed to bring home with you because when you when you get her home if you're going to change her feed you want to do that gradually a little at a time and I would also suggest that you get established with a large animal vet because if you have questions or problems arise, he or she will be a great source to help you get through those little struggles and troubled times. Um, also, good free choice minerals, a good salt block. I don't use a trace mineral, trace mineral salt block. I use a sulfur salt block. Works really good for us. And you're going to have her minerals free choice. So she's going to take in what she wants. So those are the t those two things plus clean, plenty of clean, fresh water available at all times. And that goes without saying. Okay, let's talk about behavior traits that you want to look for. When you go to look at your prospective cow, try to go at milk time. That way you can observe her as she's being handled by her people. When she's in the stanchion, does she seem, um, does she seem content? Is she agitated or is she fearful? You want to watch her during milking. Are you going to hand milk? Or are you going to machine milk? Is she is she broke to either or both? Um, watch her handler. Uh, is he gentle? Is he or she gentle with her? Do they have to put something on her to pre prevent her from kicking? Uh, do they have to tie her leg back, tie her tail back, or put a flank control that will prevent her from kicking? I would steer away from a kicking cow, especially if you have children. It's a lot of aggravation and it could be dangerous. Um, also, is she halter broke? Does she lead and does she tie? And just see if you can get out around with her and the owners in a safe way and handle her. Is she easy to be around? Um, does she like human interaction and human touch? You don't want a problem cow, uh, especially if you're new to this or inexperienced. Sometimes some of those problems can be um, more than what you can deal with or handle. So you want to start with a gentle cow that is that has probably had more than one calf and is very comfortable in her um, in her job, and that's to be a family milk cow. Um, one good source, if you live anywhere near Amish country, uh, especially a hand milk cow, that would be a great place to probably explore looking for that future cow. And one place that I would avoid would be um, the weekly sale barn. Uh, we, we love to go to the sale barn and we love the atmosphere of the sale barn, but I probably would steer away from there as far as buying my first family milk cow. So these are just a few, a few tips to kind of guide you a little bit. And if you own a milk cow or have in the past and you have some tips that you would like to share with us, please feel free to comment below because I would welcome that. But you know what? We've got feed to unload, so we better get out to the barn, but I want to leave you with this. Don't forget that your Heavenly Father loves you, and I'll see you on the next video. God bless.